Hey everybody, Brian Heist from Wilson Motorsports, and today we're going to talk shock absorbers with JRZ. Today we're going to talk about JRZ suspension engineering dampers, specifically what shafts are in them, which one you might want to pick, and why you may or may not want to upgrade. Here we have the contemporary 12 series motorsport shaft. Here we have the RS line shaft, and here we have some of the 50DA stuff that's their latest offering for three and four way motorsport parts. Here we have the JRZ RS line shaft, which is one of their originals. It's now in the RS1, RS2, RS Pro, and Pro 3, and the way this works is that we adjust it here at the end of the shaft. There's a little rod that goes up through the middle, and it adjusts this top. This top part turns this bottom part, and the bottom part in turn covers up these little bleed holes here that allow us to control how much oil goes past the main piston and through the shim stack, or comes directly out here. So as you turn it, you make that adjustment. And that adjustment, every click is about the same, so it's very predictable for you to adjust the car and know what you're feeling. This is the JRZ Motorsport shaft that's now in the 11 and 12 series dampers. What changed between these two is that instead of adjusting the oil going by through here, it can go either way in the RS line shaft. The main difference here is that you have this valve on this spring, which makes sure that the oil only goes through in one direction. So this damper is a rebound only adjustment. The adjuster is actually inside instead of outside. And that way, we can do a lot more with independence and compression and rebound on the main piston valve. One of the things that the development of the 12 series and 11 series motorsport shaft allowed us to do was modify the amount of valving force we used on either side since we now had a check valve. That allowed us to design some new pistons and take advantage of that isolation. Here is the standard JRZ piston, which is called the 8060. Very effective, very smooth, very versatile. Here you have the compression surface. Here you have the rebound surface. And if you look through the center here, you can see that hole where the oil goes through to approach these bypasses. Very similar as on the motorsport shaft. Here, we have the FA3030. This is the rebound side. And as you can see, it's identical to the compression side. There's a lot of different ways we can stack valving shims on this piston to create lots of different characteristics within the damper. And we'll show you some graphs. We can do linear, we can do linear digressive and digressive. And we can offset the amount of adjustment with these small bleed holes here. Once we had some experience using the FA3030 on the motorsport shaft and approaching adjustment in the bleed range in compression and rebound, we decided it was time to take a step further and be able to adjust compression and rebound bypass independently on the shaft as we were getting a lot of good results from adjusting the bleed with these jets on the FA3030. As such, the 50DA shaft assembly was designed. And this is the major part of that, which is the housing, and this is the adjustment housing. This part replaces the end of this shaft here, and this part goes inside of that, like this, and threads in. And there's another piece that threads in here and adjusts the compression. This allows us to independently manipulate the bleed on either side of the piston and gives a much more direct feel to the driver and a much more direct and lower amount of force adjustment to the tire, which allows us to make a lot of grip while still supporting the chassis. Fully utilizing the FA3030 met, we could get much more aggressive with the amount of compression damping we ran on the piston. This lowers damper hysteresis and increases the amount of feel you get from adjustment and for the driver while reducing the overall amount of damping you have. It also allows us to balance the amount of compression force coming from the piston or from the remote reservoir 
which we can use to manipulate how the car behaves on tracks that are either smooth or bumpy and anywhere in between. And a lot of people call us and ask, well, which one should I get? Which JRZ should I get? Should I get a three-way, a two-way, a 1232 with this shaft assembly, a 1252 with the 50DA assembly? Should I upgrade my RS Pros? Should I upgrade my motorsport dampers? It's can get pretty complicated and frankly I'm sure most people want to spend their time practicing and going faster and racing instead of clicking knobs and looking at data, which is what we're here for. We get a lot of calls and emails asking, should I upgrade my dampers? And if you don't have dampers yet, which one should I get? Should I get RS Pro 3? Should I get RS's? Should I get 1252s, 1232s? It can all be pretty confusing and that's what we're here for. In general, we like to go with something like the RS Pro 3 or the 1232 for people that are racing and competing quite a bit and want to get a solid footing on adjusting the car, setting up at the track, and making themselves and their team faster. Whereas we take clients that have a lot more experience tuning track side, driving, competing more towards the front of the field, and we'll put them in the 1252. That allows us to get to a finer level of setup make fewer compromises in that setup and get the last 5% out of the car. If you have more questions, our contact information is in the video description as well as a link to our tech blog where we go a little bit more in depth. Thanks for watching the video. Next time we'll get a 50DA on the dyno and show you what it does live.